Thanks for checking out another episode of Full Retard by Mentally Damaged. Today we have more choosing beggars so let's get to it. First up CB meets another CB. Sil, husband's little sister, moved into a new place not long ago and has been complaining about her flatmate a lot. According to her, the flatmate is a textbook CB. The flatmate wants bigger room for less rent complains that the place is too far away, five minutes walk, from bus stop, furniture aren't brand new, AC is too loud and a bunch of other problems, which are all Sil's fault because she found this place, while well, flatmate couldn't bother looking, expected Sil to ask landlady to pay for utilities which for the lease are the tenant's responsibility, sulked like a spoiled teenager when Sil declined. Sil says they used to be best friends. I guess it's true you don't know if a friend is a friend until you travel or live with them. However Sil doesn't have my sympathy because when she moved my husband paid the movers and helped with packing up, and she repaid him by complaining to family and mutual friends that he didn't buy that expensive housewarming gift she wanted. And this wasn't her first or only offence. I held my tongue, didn't tell Sil I think she and flatmate deserve each other. Up next co-worker sister wants her to plan her son's birthday and pay for it all. I have a co-worker, Faith, with two children, six years and a ten-month-old. Her sister, Hope, has a son that is five years old. Faith's son has a birthday coming up in August, while Hope's son's birthday is Christmas Day. Hope never throws a birthday party for her son since Christmas and it are the same day. The child asks for one but has yet to have one, though she has thrown birthday parties for her boyfriend, the boy's father. Faith came home from shopping for her six-year-old's birthday party and Hope's son saw the items and exclaimed, Is this for my birthday party? Faith was heartbroken that her nephew was excited for a birthday party he wasn't going to get, however, she didn't want to ruin her son's special day either, so she told the her nephew that he will get a birthday party just not combined with his cousins. Hope got angry with her and demanded to know why her son and her nephew cannot share a birthday party. Faith felt bad but felt it was wrong to do that to her son. Well Hope goes to their mother, Charity, and complains that Faith won't combine the two boys' birthday. After arguing with her mom, Faith says she will help throw a birthday party for her nephew, but she will not combine it with her own sons. The mom was okay with that and Hope was happy her kid is getting a party. Anyway, a week later and Faith tells me that Hope has done nothing to help for the birthday party. Faith has bought all of the decorations that they have right now and has planned most of the menu. When asking her sister what she would bring she said she had no money to help for it, but that Faith better be sure to have a marble cake because her son likes both vanilla and chocolate. When Faith asked her what presents to get for him, Hope says he doesn't need anything so she will just send out his school supplies list instead of actual presents for her son, which can be helpful but it's the kid's birthday party, like he should get something fun to open. When Faith got rescheduled to work the original date of the party, she asked where the next best date would be. Hope got so mad that they had to postpone the date and demanded it be combined with Faith's son's party, so her son didn't had to wait. She keeps saying if it wasn't for how happy her nephew got when he heard he would finally get a birthday party, she would have cancelled right then and there. I feel bad for the kid and my co-worker. He just wants a special day. Up next I will never watch her dog again. This happened some time ago but because of recent events I think it's relevant. Couple years ago I was transferred across country to a new part of my job that I had never worked on, just bought a home, and adopted some pets. There was a lot going on. I also really wanted to make friends with the people I worked with because I no longer had my friend group from previous state, and all my family except my husband lived in another. Maybe two months of being in my new job a girl and I started to become friends. We worked in different divisions but still would wave during meetings, talk a little bit when we could, and just tried to be friendly. She mentioned a few times she needed someone to watch her dog but thought her neighbor could it. I mentioned I was really busy and if she really needed to I might be able to help but I had to know soon. Three weeks go by and nothing is mentioned again. Then she asked if we can go out to dinner. Sure can. She asked if if I want fast food or a sit down place fast food because i had a lot to do she complains that she didn't want fast food so we end up at a local diner the meal is a bit awkward but nothing terrible as we get up to leave she mentions going to the airport at 5 tomorrow morning then she hands me a key 
I'm really confused at this point. This is a key to my house. Doggo is really friendly to people, not well trained. Can you just stop by once or twice to let her out? I decline because she should have given me more time to think about it, but then she starts to get upset. The neighbor never told her he couldn't watch the dog, then today he tells her no. She can't leave until dog has someone to watch her, and she is going to waste all the money she spent on a plane ticket. Well is dog up to date on shots? Can I just bring her to my house? She gets a weird look. The one where someone is trying to figure out how to not lie but also not tell the truth. You can give it a shot. She doesn't really get along with other animals. But you can try. I didn't trust that so I opted just to visit her at the house. It was almost two weeks of hell. Start out that dog hated other animals and would try to kill them. I found this out when I had to basically jump on the dog during a walk because a random small dog ran up to us. Luckily no issues but my nerves were shot. Owner knew how bad this was but didn't tell me. Dog also did not know any basic commands, had so much energy that she would knock me down the stairs when I came into the house, and would pee on the floor out of excitement. I managed to train Dog on basic commands. I also spent at least 40 minutes three times a day pallying fetch, brushing her, and letting her go out. 3.5 hours a day taking care of this dog while having a full-time job, and doing everything else. Oh, the neighbor also surprised how much work I was putting into dog. He had also told the owner two months out that he was having surgery and could not help, but she kept thinking he could manage a 60-pound dog with zero training after it. There was supposed to be a second pet sitter for the first week because I had 12-hour shifts that week but of course she never set that up. I also ended up with a 5-inch scar on my leg from the dog's tie down. When I brought that up all I got was, yeah that happens. Single quote. When the owner did come back to work she started trying to tell me that I would be taking hikes with dog and her. Why? Because you can train her. I can't. I need you to help. When I denied this and offered to help one weekday a week she bitched to everyone in my office. Apparently wanting to spend my weekends with my husband and pups was selfish. That was in spring. In December she casually dropped needing a pet sitter for two weeks starting that Monday, it was Thursday. Can't have a friend flying in and then going out of town. She got huffy, mentioned how hard life was, then ignored me for the rest of the day. Couple months later she casually drops that she is going on vacation again. I point blank tell her no. She mentions it a couple more times. Each time I tell her, no, I have too much going on. Every time she gets more and more upset. Another co-worker asked her why she doesn't board the dog, it cost a lot. I already spend X on plane tickets, X for the garage fee, X on car rental. She did not understand why it should cost more than $200 for two weeks to keep her dog. I have not spoken to her after this. That's it for today's episode, thanks for tuning in remember to like us on Facebook our first contest will be at 500 likes. If you have comments email us at opinions at mentallydamaged.com and if you're on YouTube don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon to get all of our latest episodes.